Hi friends, today in this video blog I am going to discuss about a very common problem that would hurt a norm, lot of our patients and other individuals as well. So I am going to be talking to you about gallbladder stones or gallstone disease. Before going in detail about what a gallbladder or a gallbladder stone is, I would like to talk about liver. A liver is a major organ which is present in the abdomen and one of the main functions of the liver is to produce something called as a bile which is nothing but a digestive enzyme. So the bile produced by the liver passes through a tube called as a common hepatic duct and it reaches the gallbladder and it is stored here. The main function of bile is to digest food. So whenever one consumes food and the food reaches the stomach or the upper portion of the small intestine, a reflex is initiated and that signal reaches the gallbladder and makes it to contract and send the bile to the small intestine and the bile once passing into the small intestine will mix with the food and help in the digestive process. So this main function of the gallbladder is to store the bile which is secreted by the liver but the bile is going to be secreted by the liver and not the gallbladder. So why does this gallstone occur? Whenever there is an imbalance in the salt which is present in the bile then a gallstone is formed. This predominantly occurs only in the gallbladder. So imagine for example when you have a tumbler of water and you put 2 teaspoons of salt in the water, it will easily get dissolved. Whereas if you try to put 1 kg of salt into 1 tumbler of water, the salt will not dissolve beyond a point and it will start precipitating. This is what exactly happens whenever you have something called as a gallbladder stone. So this can occur mainly due to the imbalance and partly also due to the improper functioning of the gallbladder or the contraction of the gallbladder. So when one has a gallbladder stone, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to undergo a surgery or undergo any form of treatment. Because even now majority of the stones are found incidentally when one goes for another health checkup or one goes for another investigation where incidentally a gallstone is picked up. So who are the individuals who will have problems secondary to the gallstones? Whenever an individual has problems secondary to gallstones, the common problem one would have is pain in the right upper abdomen. And not only pain, a lot of them would have a lot of symptoms similar to gastritis where they will have a burning sensation in the middle of the upper abdomen or they might have some reflux and heartburn and some of them will have a bloating kind of a sensation where they will have uneasiness and they will not feel comfortable in the digestive process. In addition to it, a certain of them would have a pain behind the right shoulder and some of them might even complain of loose tools whenever they consume fatty food. So these are all certain signs and symptoms which one would develop whenever they have some problem secondary to gallstones or gallbladder stones. So when a person has all these complaints and he comes to a doctor, the doctor would commonly ask for an ultrasound abdomen and this test would most of the times tell us the problem is probably due to the gallbladder stones or it is due to some other cause. So whenever you have a problem secondary to gallbladder stones, the common features which we would find in an ultrasound would be the gallbladder wall would be thickened, sometimes there might be some fluid which is present around the gallbladder secondary to the inflammatory process and certain times we might even find some features of either a gangrene or perforation in a gallbladder. In certain occasions whenever we have a doubt that some complication of this gallbladder stone has occurred then we would ask for some other investigation like a MRCP or a CT abdomen. So what are the complications that can occur? The most common complication of a gallbladder stone is that it can obstruct the small tube coming from the gallbladder which will lead to a stasis of the bile inside the gallbladder causing infection and severe pain and vomiting to the patient. Once the obstruction is relieved the problem would be better but it is very difficult to remove the stone which is obstructing the duct which is coming out of the gallbladder. In such a circumstance then the patient might have to undergo a laparoscopic cholecystectomy which is nothing but the removal of the entire gallbladder along with the stones which are present inside through a laparoscopic method. Earlier we used to do open surgery but now laparoscopy has become the gold standard to do any gallbladder surgery for gallbladder stones or polyps. In addition to it another common problem which can occur is that the stones can pass through the 
small duct which is attaching the gallbladder to the main duct which leads on into the small intestine and from the liver. So that is called as the common bile duct. When a stone enters into the common bile duct, it can obstruct the pathway and these patients would commonly present with obstructive jaundice. When a stone is present in the common bile duct, earlier like I told you, we used to do an open surgery. But for the past 20 years or more, we have been doing laparoscopic surgery and even the stones present in the common bile duct can be retrieved using a laparoscopic route. But nowadays with further scientific advancements, we are able to do something called as an ERCP which is nothing but an endoscopic route to remove the stones from the common bile duct. So this has very little morbidity and the recovery of the patients also is much more quicker. So if at all a patient has a complication of a common bile duct stone and obstructive jaundice, we would first subject them for a removal of the common bile duct stone by ERCP and subsequently perform the removal of the gallbladder through a laparoscopic route either in the same day or the next day in the same sitting. So this is very important. The primary problem where the stone started was in the gallbladder and if we don't remove the gallbladder then the problem would once again start repeating and happen in the future also. So the next common question everyone would have is that removing the gallbladder wouldn't it have any side effects. So this is the exact reason why I told you what is the main function of the gallbladder. So we are not going to say remove the gallbladder for all patients whenever they have a gallbladder stone. Gallbladder removal is going to be performed only in patients when there is a complication secondary to a gallbladder stone or a patient has symptoms relevant to the gallbladder stones. So whenever a symptom or a complication has occurred, it means that the primary function for which the gallbladder was put in the body is not happening in a proper meticulous manner. So here the patients would definitely warrant a removal of the gallbladder and this is the gold standard. So do patients develop complications because of the removal of gallbladder? Generally most of the patients when there is an indication for removal of gallbladder and the surgery is performed, they will not have too many symptoms and they will not have to modify their lifestyle too much compared to the previous time when the gallbladder was present. But in a small subset of patients, a lot of them would lose the ability to digest very high content fatty food. So those patients would be advised to be on a diet which is probably at a lower level of the fatty content or at an acceptable level of fatty content and avoid too much of fat in their diet except that not much of a modification is required in majority of the patients. So now the primary treatment option available for a gallbladder stone is removal of the gallbladder along with the stones. Alternative approaches like diets and various medications and other stuffs have not been proven to be effective. So the only effective solution which we have right now is the surgery. I hope this video blog was useful to you and if at all you have any more doubts or queries regarding the same, you can contact me at Ashwin Hospital. Thank you very much.